Pangbochi is a tiny, isolated village, high up within the mountains of Nepal. Resting at an altitude of 13,000 feet, it is located deep within the Himalayas. This tiny place is renowned for producing world-class Sherpas and is mostly inhabited by the Sangder Sherpa. Many putting this phenomena down to the extremely inhospitable climates that people from the village are exposed to from a very young age. It is also the home of an ancient monastery whose resident monks seem at home, completely isolated from the rest of mankind, above the clouds, on top of the mountains. Countless lost and extremely lucky souls have been lured to this place during the vicious blizzards which consumed the mountains, saved only by the sound of the monks' ceremonial horns. If the Yeti does indeed exist, then these surrounding mountain ranges, all but forgotten by the outside world, would undoubtedly be a suitable home for extremely elusive beasts. And if a population of human beings were ever to encounter such an animal, it would have to be the monks of such monasteries dotted within these inhospitable and completely isolated mountain ranges. Once one discovers that the majority of such populations not only believe in such creatures, but often claim to have witnessed them, the events that follow become all the more of an intriguing reality. Not only do some of these groups of devout and very long-running lines of monks claim to have seen them, but many stories are attached to such events. Some, the Pangbochi Monastery in particular, actually claim to be in possession of the physical remains of this creature. Peter Byrne, funded by an extremely wealthy oil tycoon by the name of Tom Slick, would find these remains high within the mountains that the monks had kept with them for many years as a ritual artifact, a part of their ceremonies day by day. Known as the Pangbochi Hand, Byrne had no idea what to expect. Imagine his surprise when the monks produced what appeared to be an authentic yeti's hand and a complete scalp. According to the monks, many years prior, one of their brothers had walked into a cave to meditate. There, he saw a yeti. He returned many years later to find that the yeti was dead. He collected a hand and the scalp and took it back to the monastery where it remained. Astounded by the artifacts, Byrne requested they let him take them away for further study. Unfortunately, the monks refused, claiming the remains were too highly valued by the monastery. Unperturbed and determined to come away from there with some sort of hard evidence, in a shocking move, Peter Burns stole sections of the hand bone from the monks, replacing them with human bone. Byrne then smuggled the bones out of Nepal and into India, where actor James Stewart allegedly smuggled the hand bones out of the country in his luggage to England. Once at the London University, primatologist William Charles Osman Hill conducted a physical examination of the pieces that Byrne supplied. His first findings were that it was a hominid, and later, in 1960, he decided that the Pangbochi fragments were a closer match to a Neanderthal, but not an exact match. In 1991, in conjunction with Lauren Coleman's research, it was discovered that the Slick Expedition consultant, an American anthropologist by the name of George Agagino, had retained other samples of the Pangbochi hand kept from the original theft. The NBC program Unsolved Mysteries obtained samples and determined they were similar to human tissue, but were not human, and could only verify they were near human. Shortly thereafter, most likely due to confirmation via forensic testing of the artifact's authenticity. The entire hand and scalp was stolen from the Pangbachi Monastery in a military precision-style operation. Rumors regarding the items reportedly disappearing into a private collection via the illegal underground in the sale of antiquities would circulate, yet they have never been seen again. George Agagino, before his death on September 11, 2000, transferred his secret research upon the Pangochi Yeti hand to Lauren Coleman. In 2010, Weta Workshops, who did the models for the Lord of the Rings movies, kindly produced a replica skull and hand based on photos of the missing hand and skull. Mike Alsop handed over the replica skull and hand to monks at Pangbochi in May 2011. They seemed to be very pleased to have their artifacts back. 
Let's just hope no one tells them. From all over the planet, ancient legends of a bipedal, ape-like creature, far larger yet apparently incredibly intelligent, have persisted into the modern day. Legends which arose worldwide. Creatures now witnessed by literally millions of souls, yet regardless of the literally global distribution of reports of these said animals, they have remained elusive to modern science in all but a few very interesting and curious cases, one of which being a most curious of discoveries made in 1951 on none other than the slopes of Mount Everest. Some argue that such a large creature, no matter the remoteness of its claimed habitat, if in existence, would have been captured and or exposed to the wider public by now. This, regardless of their possible intelligence, ability to see in infrared, allowing them to dodge trail cams, and also that there are discoveries of new animals, including large mammals made almost weekly on our planet. It would seem, although modern technology has brought us together, giving the apparent impression that our planet be smaller than it is, in reality, there are still vast stretches of terrain yet to be fully explored and rarely, if ever, visited by man. Mysterious events have also occurred during the modern age, like that of the Dietlof Pass incident or the Pangbosh Yeti, which still reside within a monastery in Nepal, which all evade explanation without the existence of this creature. As mentioned, in 1951, an incredible find was stumbled upon by none other than Eric Shipton, an incredibly trustworthy source and man of great integrity. While on the Menlung Glacier, on the west side of Mount Everest, while looking for an alternative route to the summit, Shipton came across a seemingly unending set of tracks, recently left by a barefooted bipedal creature of massive proportions. So stunned was Shipman by this find, he carefully examined and photographed the best print, laying his ice axe beside it in an attempt to demonstrate its enormous size. According to National Geographic, quote, Shipton and Michael Ward were searching for an alternative Everest route when they came across the prints. Shipton was one of the most highly respected Everest explorers. So if he is bringing back a print, it is a real print. Nobody could ever question that." End quote. Thus, the question is, what could have made them? Could these be authentic, actual prints of a snow yeti or abominable snowman? A slightly different species of Sasquatch? One adapted to colder, more mountainous environments? Some, so convinced that Shipton did indeed encounter authentic prints, they have dedicated their entire lives to the pursuit of the truth surrounding the find. Believing Shipton not to have been an individual who would have any interest or inclination to fake such a discovery. Daniel Taylor, for example, author of Yeti, The Ecology of a Mystery, has been searching for signs of this particular abominable snowman within the high Himalayas since he was a child. With the World Book Encyclopedia even approaching Sir Edmund Hillary to pursue the find's origins, he was quoted as saying, we shouldn't just go yeti searching, but should also study how people could live at such high altitudes." End quote. The publication was so convinced of their authenticity, as was Hillary himself, that they built a house at 19,000 feet and experimented on how humans acclimatized. With such efforts going into the find, one must wonder why the possibility of its existence, if you also take into account the Pangbosh remains, and also the Dietlof Pass incident, why the possibility of their reality is so passionately dismissed as impossible by so many. The Shipton prints are a mystery which is undoubtedly incredibly compelling.